but your meditation. All right, I'm here with Bill Lang at VCF East, and uh, what is it you got for us here? So, uh, for this VCF East, I was assigned the Atari XE, so I brought out five or six Atari XEs here. The XE line, what exactly is that as so, far as Atari, Atari? came out with the Atari 400, 800 around 1979. That lasted for a couple of years, and they came out with the XL line, the 1200, 600XL, and 800XL. And then Atari got sold off to the family that owned Commodore before that, and they came out with the XE line. And this, so this is the Atari 8-bit? Atari 8-bit, that's correct. And now what made the Atari 8-bit special? For many of us, we started out in the arcade or, and with the Atari VCS, and we became uh, brand loyal, and we moved on to the computers. And they came out in 79, uh, um, they have, Atari had a lot of experience in the arcades with like Missile Command and such. And so they have graphic co-processor inside the machine and a sound chip. And it was really the, one of the first uh, computers out in 79 that have that additional hardware other than just the 6502 on board. Some of these chips at least were designed by uh, the same designer of the Amiga's chip. That is true. So uh, Jay Miner was one of the designers on the Atari 2600. And then he designed the Atari 8-bit, starting with the 400-800, which are, are down here. What I heard is he wanted to work on 16-bit computers. And at the time, Atari just wanted to sell the, VC, the VCS and cartridges and games. And they didn't really want to get in to the 16-bit computers. So he went off and started his own company. Right. So what, what we have here on this part of the line are descendants of his That's machine. right. It's got his DNA in his machines. He, he helped design the original chips in these machines. Great, okay, so what do we have? So starting here, so this isn't actually an XE, it's an XL, but it's an interesting one because it's a, a Hebrew XL, a 600 XL. It's got a Hebrew ROM in it, it's got Hebrew key caps, and as you can see on the screen, it, it goes from right to left and it's in Hebrew. Um, the next one in line, uh, this is your uh, low-end XE, the 65 XE, which would be, um, a 64K Atari 8-bit um, low end of the XE line. Right, here's an interesting thing to see as we go from the 600XL to the XE, the design looks a lot like the Atari STs. Right, so it's same kind of gray coloring as uh, the ST line. So Atari was trying to match their ST line with these um, XE 8-bit computers. Now, aside from RAM, was anything else really changed between the, these two lines? Uh, so they have um, a different uh, port on the back and uh, some of them have an additional memory management chip, but it's pretty much the same computer. I also see a box plugged into the 65XE. What is that? Sure, so this device here, this is called an S-Drive Max, and what it is is a floppy drive emulator for Atari 8-bit computers. So basically, it's an Arduino with a, a, a cheap Arduino with a cheap touchscreen plugged into it um, and some wires hooked up to the SIO port, so it's just one wire, it's got a power cord, and you can see it's a touch screen and I can choose from different directories whatever games I want. And it emulates four different floppy drives. It also emulates a cassette drive. So I can load any software ever made for this computer from this device just using a tiny little SD card, which I can plug into my laptop to load, plug it back in here, and have the, the ability to touch screen it and, and choose which drive I want it to load and just reboot and it, it will load it up. Right, now we're seeing this more and more for all these older systems where floppy drives are mechanical, they're failing, diskettes themselves age and eventually go bad. Sure. And this is a way to just keep these systems up and running. You know, I build these for, there's about 40, 50 bucks in parts. I have a 3D printer so I can 3D print both sides of the case. You know, it doesn't cost very much and I know it's gonna work every time. It's very light. I can put it in my pocket and carry it to an event and load any software it was ever made. So it's very convenient. All right, and what do we have now? Uh, so this is the high end of the XE line, the 130 XE, which would have 128K of RAM. Um, Shh, everybody, I actually have two of these, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> uh, so what we're showing here is um, the Atari XCP80. So when Atari came out in 79, they had only 40 comms, they had no 80 comms support. And so late in the life, um, Atari came out with this device, which plugs into a joystick port. It goes through here, and then you can output 80 comms to 
a green screen or a monochrome monitor. Right. So that's now, why we have this monitor if here. If I recall, now a lot of computers had either 40 columns or less. 80 columns seemed like at that era the sweet spot. 80 for columns it. would be like the business standard. If you're going to do word processing or um, spreadsheets, VisiCalc, uh, 80 columns is where you'd want to work. And so that's where the Apple II really had the advantage because there was 80 column cards to plug in there and they had native 80, 80 columns. Right now, uh, what is this big UFO looking <laughs> disc? All right, so this device right here is called a, a multi-joy. And it has, you'd use these two outputs to go into the two joystick ports. And then you can hook up eight different joysticks to one Atari computer. And what that allows us to do is there's some games have been modified, such as a, we have kind of a Frogger game where eight people can play at the same time. And it's a lot of fun getting eight people to sit around the computer and play with one time. And that's why you see all these joysticks lined up right now. Well, now, a lot of systems use the Atari joystick standard, yes. including the Commodores, the Amigas. Is this only for Atari or can other systems use it so, as well? Uh, so there's no software um, for this device. Um, it's, it's just kind of spinning around pulling the joystick ports, you'd have to update the game. So if somebody updated a Commodore 64 game, I assume it would work. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I assume that would work. It's interesting. Now, th this machine here looks the same, but I see a different name badge. So this is an Atari 800 XE. Um, so this was only available in Eastern Europe. It wasn't even available in the United States. So this is basically just a, uh, I believe, a 65 XE in a different package and they're riding on the Atari 800XL brand in Eastern Europe. So this was, the, I believe, the last 8-bit computer Atari made. It was only available in Eastern Europe. This is a rare unicorn right here. This is an Atari XF351 3.5-inch floppy drive. So I, I don't believe this was actually ever sold anywhere. It was just a prototype. And if you look on the back, there's actually no connectors on the back. And so this is just here as a rare unicorn to show that Atari was working on this, but then they canceled it. Interesting. And this here is uh, another 65XE, but this is called like the 65XE Star. It's an Arabic machine, and you can see it has Arabic on. It's got some stars. That's why it has the nickname the Star. It's got Arabic keycaps on top. And if you look at the screen, it, this is a program that teaches you English and Arabic, and it has Arabic... Uh, characters in multiple places. The last machine we have here, retailers didn't want computers anymore in the late 80s. They wanted video game machines. So Atari, again, repackaged the 8-bit computer in a video game machine. The light gun's been very popular this, uh, this weekend. People play in those games. And this can actually be used as a full Atari computer. Right, I, I see a little secret under the don't look behind the curtain. <laughs> There's a full keyboard back there. And then this becomes a full Atari 8-bit computer. You can hook any peripheral to it and use it just like a computer. It's just twice as big because the keyboard sticks out the front pretty far. Thank you very much. Thank That's you, guys. a great piece of information yep. we have here.